If you are unable to understand and apply spiritual principles to your life, the result will leave you frustrated and living a life filled with limitations. The first point that I want to share with you is that everything that happens in your life originates spiritually. Everything. Your trials, problems, woes, they originate spiritually. Your blessings and all of the good things that you get to enjoy, it originates spiritually. Everything that you need to prosper in this world, God has already stored it for you spiritually, being in heaven. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, it says exactly that. It reads, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. In Psalm 31, 19, it says, Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you in the presence of the sons of men. Now, in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 8, verse 7, this verse talks about how God has prepared good things for us and how he's leading us to receive those good things. It says, for the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of bricks of water, of fountains and springs that flow out of valleys and hills, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity and which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. And when you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. That's gratitude. This shows that not only does God anticipate to bless us, but he has placed everything in order to do so. Now, Satan's job is to come through and block you from receiving every blessing that God already has in place for you. He's not trying to block it because he needs it. He's not trying to block it because he wants it, but because he doesn't want you to have it in hopes that you will turn your back to God out of frustration. And by default, those that don't serve God serve Satan. The second thing is that your affirmations will break or make your life. That is the words that come out of your mouth. In Proverbs 18, 21, it says that the life are in the power of the tongue. Job 22, 28, it says that you will also declare a thing and it will be established for you. Now, the next verse is very indicative of how God tells us to speak. He created us in his authoritative image and he wants us to operate in authority. So in Jeremiah chapter one, verse five, uh, the Lord says to Jeremiah, I chose you before I formed you in the womb. I set you apart before you were born. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. And then Jeremiah says, oh, no, Lord God, look, I don't know how to speak since I'm, I'm only a youth. And then God says, do not say I am only a youth for you will go to everyone I send you to and speak whatever I tell you to. Jeremiah tried to talk himself out of his calling and God corrected him. There's power in our words. We have to be cautious of the things that we say. Now, with this, you want to ensure that you are declaring the words of God over your life and always vocally express gratitude. Everything that God says about you is good. He even pursues those that don't believe in him. That's how good he is. Now, turning scriptures into affirmations and speaking them over my life daily has been a game changer and it has yielded so much power in my life. An example of turning a verse into an affirmation, let's say we can use Jeremiah 29 11. Okay, so Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. Now, an affirmation of this verse would be something like, uh, would be something like, I'm incredibly grateful because the Lord has given me a great future, hope, and prosperity. I'm incredibly grateful because the Lord has given me a great future, hope, and prosperity. I'm incredibly grateful because the Lord has given me a great future, hope, and prosperity. Now you can also turn this into a declaration. And it being a declaration because the Lord declared it and that he said that um, he had declared plans to give us hope, future and prosperity. So you could say something like, I declare that goodness, prosperity and hope is in my future. It is written that goodness, prosperity and hope is in my future. I declare that goodness, prosperity and hope is in my future. And you just say it over and over again. You, now you can put together a few of them. You can put together maybe uh, three or four of them for whatever you're dealing with in life. Um, so if you're having issues with you know, insecurity, if you're having issues with um, 
with um, encouragement, if you're having issues with whatever the, 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 the qualms of your life is, you can create an affirmation from that based off of God's word. And you want to make sure that you say it so much that it becomes a part of you, that you internalize it much like a song. You know, you read, so you listen to songs, you, you know the songs by heart, and then you become one with the song. You're going to become one with these affirmations, which is the word of God. You want to make sure that you're declaring God's promises to you. I cannot stress that enough. It has to be the word of God. God does not lie. He watches over his word to make sure that it comes to pass. And his words have backing. They have power. His words have backing. Now, the last thing that I want to mention is not only something that will impact you, but it will impact your future. The way you live your life and the words that come out of your mouth will always dictate your future. If you're living a life with premeditated sin, meaning that you schedule sin on your calendar, you go and do it and then you expect God to forgive you, you are in grave danger. Do not, do not, do not take God's patience for granted. If you had a supportive spouse and you repeatedly abused their trust through cheating, your apologies would become empty words. His patience and grace is designed to lead us into repentance, meaning to turn away from sin, not to keep running back to it. But our loyalty to sin is the root cause to all of the problems in our life. Addiction, fornication, lying, cheating, stealing, watching those bad X-rated videos, gossiping, the list goes on. And none of us are perfect. But know that this not only limits our walk, but our future generation, our children and grandchildren. We saw this with Eve. One person's bad judgment can cause an entire lineage to fall. So with every decision that you make, ensure that you ask yourself this question. Is what I'm doing going to bless my future generation or is it going to curse them? Is my addiction going to curse my children or bless them? Really sit and reflect on how your current decisions will not only impact you, but your children as well or your loved ones if you don't have children, or your family members. Sin, it's wrapped in comfort but rooted in selfishness. Don't be the root cause for the generational curse that your children and grandchildren will later be needing deliverance from. I'll be praying for you. None of us are perfect. We all fall short, but God is merciful. He forgives us, and remember, he doesn't look at our actions, but he judges us by what's in our heart. The love, the hate, the devotion, the unforgiveness and bitterness, that no one else sees but he's merciful and he desires to give us the kingdom but we have to seek him first so i hope you found this information helpful if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you want to see similar content subscribe and i will see you guys next time blessings